Corn School on realagriculture.com is brought to you by Veltima Fungicide and Pride Seeds. Hi, I'm Bernard Tobin. Welcome to the Corn School. How much nitrogen do farmers lose when they apply the nutrient in season? Is volatilization a significant problem? Could 4R management and urease inhibitors help? On this episode, we're going to visit with University of Guelph researcher Josh Nasalski and his team to see if we can find some answers to those questions. Now, in 2021-2022, Josh, you've been running nitrogen trials across Ontario. Tell us what you're up to. Tell us what you're hoping to learn. Sure, yeah, uh, no problem, Bern. So this is a fairly large trial, four locations across the province uh, with collaborators like Dave Hooker, John Lozon, Craig Drury. And uh, what we're looking at is how to manage fertilizer nitrogen better in corn. Uh, and this particular experiment, we're looking at what's the best way to minimize nitrogen losses from in-season applications using this 4R framework, looking at what's the right source and the right placement of nitrogen. Now, you've got uh, UAN, versus urea. Talk about how you got it all set up here. Absolutely. We have six different 4R treatments. So we're applying, the, we're applying different rates. I'll just talk about one rate today. We're applying one rate with six, uh, six different 4R treatments. Uh, surface applied urea, surface applied UAN, urea, uh, urea ammonium nitrate, with and without a urease inhibitor, agrotane. Okay. Then we also have uh, injected urea and injected UAN, about two inches below the soil surface. And that's not n always say the most realistic um, for our treatment. You know, most farmers in season might be applying it on the surface, but we just wanted to compare how effective is a urease inhibitor versus injection. So in, season, in terms of in season losses in Ontario, in season nitrogen losses, the number one is uh, number one pathway is volatilization compared to anything like nitrous oxide or, or um, leaching. So we focused this experiment on measuring volatilization losses across those different source and placement treatments. So Josh, let's take a look at your 2021 research first. Tell us about the story at Ridgetown. Uh, sure. So at Ridgetown, we had fairly high losses um, across those different treatments. And you could definitely see the effect of that urease inhibitor, as well as injecting uh, your urea or UAN. It lowered the losses. And that lowered losses translated into higher yields. So you saw, we saw about 11 bushel yield response to using that inhibitor, uh, that uh, urease inhibitor at Ridgetown. Mm -hmm. um, and so why were losses so high? We're still th thinking that through. When we looked at the weather data, we got lots of rainfall very soon after application. Um, but that urease inhibitor still proved its value in terms of yield and the reduction in, in the vol volatilization losses. Mm -hmm. So let's take a look at the Winchester data here, Josh. A much different story, especially the volatilization story. Exa exactly. So this is a pretty clear-cut example of the power of soil pH to regulate or determine how much losses you're getting from volatilization. So Winchester is pretty unique. It had a acidic soil, fairly unique in the data or in our locations. It was one of the more acidic soils and their volatilization losses overall were pretty low, uh, but there was still that trend where if you use an inhibitor and if you injected, you had lower losses, but overall losses were low across the board. And so when you looked at the yield data, it really didn't matter how you applied it. Uh, yields were pretty much similar across all those different application strategies. Mm -hmm. Now, I want to talk about um, some takeaways here, but before we get there, let's talk about your 2022 research. Yep. Here at Allura, um, not complete yet, but you do have some interesting results in early data. Y yes, so 2022, we're, in, we're sitting here in August in 2022, so we don't have yield data yet, but thanks to JK and Zhang Wan uh, on the project, we do have volatilization data. So the soil here, soil pH is seven, seven and a half, what we measured. And we have much higher volatilization losses than either Ridgetown uh, or Winchester in 2021 last year. I think that's a pH thing. And when you look, especially without the inhibitors, if you're surface applying nitrogen, you had very high losses. And um, I, I have, it would be very surprising to me if that does not translate into lower yields in those, in those treatments that didn't get the inhibitors. Yeah. So final question for you, overall, what you've seen obviously mm -hmm. last year and seeing this year, mm -hmm. what are the key takeaways? You know, what are the key mm -hmm. messages for growers? Key messages are, um, I have a, there's a couple. So a farmer doesn't really have control over the weather um, and they don't really know when it's going to rain. But what we found is even if you get really heavy rainfalls, like in Ridgetown in 2021, you can still get losses. Um, and so I think inhibitors, inhibitors can absolutely pay. Now, it, the story is different if you're on soils that are more acidic. 
Um, so soil testing has its value there. Uh, if you have a, a field that is fairly acidic, uh, your volatilization losses might not, while they might be like, they're not gonna be zero, they might not warrant the use of an inhibitor that at the added cost of using an inhibitor. Finally, uh, I think it's really important to realize that, you know, Ontario compared to the rest of the Corn Belt, the rest of uh, where we grow corn in, in the, on the continent, we tend to have more basic soils. Uh, our pear material has more calcium. We have more calcium in our soils. And that just increases the risk of losses. And so compared to, say, uh, what's going on uh, in Quebec, compared to what's going on in the Midwest, you know, volatilization is, is, is much more of a problem here in Ontario, number one. But even within Ontario, it's going to vary. That's what we're seeing across all our sites. The trends in terms of inhibitors are working, injection works to reduce your losses. But the amount of loss you're getting is very variable. So it I think it does pay to test for your soil pH, and I think it does pay to, um, I think if you're surface applying, you really need to consider using inhibitors. Hey Josh, uh, terrific insights. Always great having you on the Corn School. Thank you. Thank you.